Started my life was kind of rough, I had an awful battle. The doctor set my parents down and said my life was fragile. Perspective is the game, I guarantee the name. Just put your head down, do the work, and everything will change. Sipping tea, helping feels, yeah, that's what I wanted. Being patient, hella tricky, yeah, I'm being honest. See what Gary B puts in positivity. What's good, what's good, what's good? Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning. July 7th in the building, big day. Um, here we are, T with Gary V. Glad to be back. Last week was fire. Let's see if we can keep that momentum going. Let me give some shout outs to everybody in the comments. Um, are we all part of this share squad? Let's definitely like take the URLs. Let's hit the share button across all the platforms. Let's share, 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 share. Share, 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 share. Keith Jordan, what's good? Latia, what's good? Um, Yami Soto, thank you for joining us. Ted Parmesan, what's good? Kelly Hill on Facebook is in the building. Jennifer K. Connor Gray, what's good? Jake Ward on LinkedIn is in the building. VoiceOver Donnie on Periscope is in the building. Hey, Dave A. on LinkedIn. Where's the Twitch family? Where's the Twitch family? There's the Twitch family. Seuss, good to see you. What up? Um, Willie D. in the building. I love Willie D. Um, Rohit, great to see you. Sandy S., good to see you. Elijah Luth in the building. Morning, 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 morning. Dustin, hope you're doing well. Share, 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 share. Uh, let's get that going. Dustin, I'm sure you're working behind the scenes. Maybe that's why you're not pumping in, but oh, there you are. You said hi, so I was like, okay. Well, you know, when I, I want you in the mix. Oh, thank you. You are, you are the star of Tea with Gary V. Nah. <laughs> Buy any sports cards in the last week? Pokemon. Let's go. I think I paid a little too much, but <laughs> I don't. It won't. You won't end up paying too much. That market is. Yeah, I know. Fire. Like I've I've been doing research, and I was like, damn, only two months ago it was like half the price that it is now. Like, everything, Fuck. everything in sports cards. Was ha- <laughs> every basketball, soccer, and Pokemon and wrestling card was a half the price two months ago. It's just crazy yeah. how hot it is. Yeah. All right, let's get in the show. Cool. Yo, yo, Gary D. What's good, man? What's good, JC? How are you? Great, man. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I can. Awesome. Awesome. So I just wanted to say um, thank you for everything. Honestly, um, I've been watching your show for years at this point. I don't know if you remember me, but we have met at Complex Con LA. I recall. Okay. Yeah, I was waiting in line. They were like, you got to buy the shoes. And I was like, I didn't come to buy the shoes. I came to talk to Gary. I know he'll talk to me. So appreciate that for sure. Um, so I just want to tell you a little bit about myself, a little bit of context of what I do. Um, I told you my company before is Jokes LLC. Um, basically, our mission is to inspire and instill confidence in those who have been laughed at, misunderstood, overlooked by the hands of normality through design, art, and fashion. So um, how I got to the name Jokes, so I was a dancer for eight years, hip-hop dance, main inspiration, um, kind of... Did that for a while, went to college, Temple University, joined a dance team. My goal was to open up a nonprofit dance organization for kids, and I blew out my knee. So this is the third time I blew out my knee, and I was just like, dance has always been something freeing for me, you know? And then it became something of fear, you know? I was like, yeah. every time I dance, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bust my knee. Again. Yeah, of course. Yep. So I had to find something to focus my creativity, you know? And I started painting. So I've always been, like, artistic. Um, and I took that painting and the name Jokes comes from my dance name. So my dance name was Joke Star. And I took that when I was like 16 and started to brand it. So I turned Joke Star into a noun. So what that meant was um, an individual who despite being criticized or made fun of, who sticks to their goals and eventually shines. Got it. So my idea was I was gonna turn kids from jokes to stars by teaching them confidence through dance because that's what it gave me. I love that. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. And that whole entire thing switched when I stopped dancing. So I kind of lost myself, lost the mission, and I found painting, and at the time I was calling my paintings jokes art, I was just doing it because it was already my branded name. And then what had happened was I started putting my paintings on t-shirts, and then it clicked. And it was literally jokes on me. And I was like, wow. And then it was like jokes on us. So when you wear it, it's jokes on you. When I wear it, it's jokes on me. When we wear it, it's jokes on us. So I took my name. I got the LLC, Jokes LLC. And I was like, all right, I got a fashion brand now with the jokes on us. And I'm still doing the art with the Jokes Art Gallery. So it's kind of like the parent company's jokes. 
It's just a whole lot of fucking jokes. It's a whole lot of jokes because at the end of the day, what I'm trying to do is let everybody know that ultimately the joke's on us. You know, it's a confidence thing. Everybody gets made fun of. Everybody gets pushed around. Of course. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? You know, so when you wear this, when you wear this brand, when you see the jokes, when you see the name, I basically want that to mean confidence. You know, I want it to be where if someone's wearing Gucci or if someone's wearing Yeezy, it's like it doesn't matter what they're wearing, you know, because the joke's on us. Like it's all over us. They can be wearing. You've, comple- you've completely established it. Thank I got you. it. Thank Go you. ahead. So, awesome. what can I answer? So basically, um, my goal is I'm trying to get jokes on the world, and I'm not really. I feel like being a true artist, I don't. Com- it's hard for me to conform to the social media, the Instagram, the white boxes, the posting, and I feel like I'm trying to create art to fit in these boxes, you know. And it's not working out for me very well. Well, and and so you're trying to figure out how to translate the mission and the message and the content onto social. Well, that that's part of it. I think I'm doing pretty good at getting the message out, but I think the trouble I have is just focusing on the social. You know, I kind of want to just go in all in on the art and. To give a little bit more context, like I was a business major in college. I went for insurance. So I have a day job in insurance. I do all this on that back end. But it's hard for me to balance the business and the art, you know. So I kind of like I'm having troubles with that. And I kind of just want to go full-fledged with the art. But I have this job. I have student loan debt and all that stuff. So. Well, I mean, there's a lot of variables here. One, no different than if I was a dancer, that'd be a big fucking disaster. Are you actually capable of building a business is number one. Okay. Are you something that you have to figure out? Two, you're in the practical part of your life right now. Unfortunately, you have these student loans, so you've got to have this job. Um, you know, There's a couple ways to play it. One, you go all in on the art and business potentially even with a business partner who might be better at business than you, and, and do that for a year, give yourself a year, give yourself two years, and if it doesn't work out, then you, go, you keep co- collecting interest on that debt, and then you go back to practicality, but you always felt like you went for it, or you go the other route and kind of eat some more shit for another three, four years do the, on the side. I think the biggest thing that stands out for me is are you actually, you know, it's fun that you're such a talent in art and dance, because it, because you then recognize that other people can't, you know how you and your boys and, and, and girls made fun of other people for not being able to dance? You know, yeah. that's kind of how I do it with business. Like, you know, like, you know, you just, and when I say make fun of, you're not doing jokes, you're recognizing, oh shit, this is talent. And I think JC, the biggest thing you need to figure out is are you actually capable? Mm. Are you actually capable of running a business that's gonna have people buy art, buy clothes, do things, and, And the reality is, oftentimes, uh, even on this show, we we can be around the bush kind of skirting the issue, which is a lot of people just don't know how to build businesses. Mm -hmm. Um, So to give a little context in my business history, um, so I started a lawn, I started a landscaping business when I was 13, me and my homie, we went around, did did all that stuff. Um, I worked at Subway when I was 16, and then after that, I was like a janitor at a school. You You have work ethic. Yeah. Like, nobody fucking tries harder than me playing basketball. Right. The problem is I couldn't play on a high school basketball team, let alone a professional one. I think it's very clear to me, and I can even see in your conviction and then even your rebuttal here, that I think you have the work ethic. The question is, do you have the talent to sell enough paintings and hoodies and T-shirts to make that a sustainable living? That is something you have to really ask yourself. And if the answer is no, if you're being really raw, then you go and get a business partner. If the answer is yes then you make the decision of one of two moves. You jump out of insurance and you go full throttle for 24 months on this, get really fucking raw, eat, 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 you know, spend money on nothing but like food and shelter, collect even more debt because you're compounding your interest, you're not doing, the, you're not doing payments because you're going all in on the art thing and you go two years on that and then if it doesn't work, you go back and you feel great that you tried or you go the other route next two years you fucking save every dollar, don't spend anything, start paying off that debt, and then jump full throttle in two or three years or four years and, and go for it. That's just a decision you have to make for yourself. Gotcha. I think where I'm at right now is, um, so the business has been doing pretty well. Um, I have products worldwide. I just got orders in Denmark. How, um, much, how much, tell the truth here, how much top line revenue for the year is the business doing? 
So sales for the year. Sales for the year. I ha- I have to like double look into that, but roughly. Year, been at LSE for three years. I've been doing the online business for three years. First year we did about a grand, um, very minimal. You know, just yep. friends and yeah, yeah. Um, Second year it was like uh, thirty five hundred, and this year we we just broke ten k. So it's grown. That's in sales, and then with profit, it's going to be right. much lower. All of which is not sustainable hmm. for you to live on. And I think I think again, I think the question is, it's a three prong attack for you. Hmm. Do you need a business partner? who's really got it, she or he, in business. And if not, and you feel like you're doing 10K because you have so little time on it, but if you go full throttle, you can get it to 100K, then you gotta decide, are you gonna do that now and get deeper in debt, or are you gonna do that in three years after you got yourself out a little bit? That's it, that's the answer, JC. Okay. Yeah, and I think with what I'm doing right now is like, it's, it is a fear of scale a little bit because I'm doing, so I'm printing all the stuff myself. You know, I'm doing all the printing myself, um, I also do like designing and hand painting on clothing pieces for musical artists. Like I got a pair of pants from um, Steve Aoki. So the goal really is, is to kind of get into that sphere of music and hip hop with like custom pieces that are, I get it. High, that are I get it. End, and then it kind of like push the brand that way. Yep. Yes, I understand. <laughs> you, gotta, um, you gotta figure out the three things I told you. Do you need a partner? that can really drive the business. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't, because you have a lot of pride and a belief in your business savviness, which you are showing in this call, you need to then jump now, go full throttle for 24 months and always feel like you went for it, or save every fucking penny you can, pay off debt, go raw, don't buy buy any fucking stupid shit for 24 months, and then jump and do it. That's your three options. Okay, okay. All right, right, bro, you got One more more thing. Real quick, real quick. I'm trying to get jokes on the world. Can we give a shout out to the Instagram? Um, yeah, it's right here. Phone. It's been up the whole time. There you go. Everybody follow it. Thanks, JC. Talk to you. Let's keep yeah. it moving. Yu-Gi-Oh getting a lot of love in the comments. Yeah, I mean, I think, oh, there he is. What's up, bro? There they are. Mr. Gensky, good to see you. AJV. Wait to see you in the building. Greg, you hear me? Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. All right, like I told a bunch of you on social media, we have a fairly big announcement uh, this morning. It's been, a, it's been a fun month for me. Obviously, last week, the announcement of the sale of Empathy Wines was a big deal, and today uh, we are announcing with this uh, handsome young man you see on the screen, Greg Gensky. I think all of you know uh, A.J. Vaynerchuk, my delightful younger brother. Um, uh, we're announcing the expansion of Vayner Sports. We've been in football for, what is it, five years now, AJ? Four and change. Four and a half years on football. So I'll let, I'll let you, AJ, and Greg kind of uh, take over the announcement and we'll, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Now, as soon as you hear the announcement, please share on social, get the word out. Uh, go ahead, AJ and Greg. Cool, I'll give it the simple line and then Greg, I'll let you expand. Um, like Gary said, we've been football for the last four and a half years and this marks the moment in which we expand into baseball. So we're fired up. Greg's going to lead the charge and I'll let him go into detail. And Greg, give a little bit of a background of your uh, career. We've uh, partnered up with Greg in creating Vayner Baseball and in, uh, in Vayner Sports. Greg, a little context on you. Yeah, I, I'm a, you know, a sports aficionado my entire life. I was a baseball player, wanted to do that. That didn't work out. Uh, became a trial lawyer. Love trying cases, but I was brought into the sports agent world almost 20 years ago. And so for 20 years, I've been dedicated uh, at representing professional athletes and really loving it, you know, loving it, had a a lot of success, had the privilege of working for some really, really great athletes, working with some really great partners, learning a lot. And in starting uh, this new agency, it was really the focus for me to find the absolute best partners available, both on the client side uh, and with the company and i just got to tell you guys i'm ecstatic uh that we're able to come together and really enhance this offering and i'm able to take my 20 years of perspective looking at this business and determining what would be the absolute best model to provide the best representation to players and what you guys have done on the business side and the sports side coupled with what i think myself and my very talented staff bring to the table is really unprecedented in the industry uh, we're going to be able to do some some really dynamic things for athletes, and I couldn't be more excited. 
AJ, thoughts from your perspective? Yeah, I mean, Greg hit it on the head. I think that we spent these last few years proving out a different model. I think Vayner Sports and, and I think what really linked us all together has really driven home the idea that we don't just represent athletes, but we represent human beings. And athletes today versus athletes, even maybe when Greg started his career, have much more of a focus on off the field and what they're able to do with the platform that the NFL or Major League Baseball provides them. And so I think our success and our unique background in terms of entrepreneurship, investing, you know, Gary, what you've done with your personal brand, that has a lot of guys gravitating towards what we can offer. And, and I think the other piece of it too, Greg, I want you to go into more detail. You're being humble. You know, some of the work that you've done and some of these contracts that you've done, they're legit, legit. And so, you know, maybe just kind of highlight a few of them. Yeah, Greg, if I'm reading your Wikipedia properly, four billion in contracts, that, you know, that's pretty fucking serious shit. Yeah, we were, uh, we were very busy as an agency. We were very fortunate <laughs> to have a, a lot of really good clients. And, and I say that it, it was a privilege. And one thing I'm very confident about is that myself, uh, my staff, Joe Mizzo, Eric Eyes, and the other agents that work with me, uh, Vernon Wells, now that he's an agent, is every time- By the way, quick fun fact on Vernon Wells. Vernon Wells was the backbone of two fantasy championships for my brother AJ here. I I hated Vernon Wells because AJ had him at a cheap price in our fantasy baseball. The first thing thing I told Vernon when when Greg connected us was like, hey man, you, you sent me two rings. That was big. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, and Greg, Vernon was one of your record-setting deals when he was your client, right? Yeah, correct. So we, we've had the, like I said, we've had the privilege of representing a lot of great players at the important stage of their career. And we, we've always delivered on the contract side. And Vernon Wells certainly is one of those players with a record-setting $126 million deal, uh, a revolutionary player opt-out at that time, which we then duplicated in the Sabathia deal and a few other deals. Uh, so we've always been extraordinarily focused, as we should, on maximizing client compensation, uh, setting new records, not just for our clients, but for the industry as a whole, so that the industry can grow and we can continue to represent players' rights and, and maximize the competition. And uh, Vernon Vernon has added it to his Wikipedia page that he's one of the stars of your guys' fantasy baseball team. <laughs> <laughs> you know, from my perspective, you know, AJ and I, this is fun because... We went into football one way. We got a very small shop. We wanted to learn. We didn't know much about the sports representation business. AJ had a real passion, decided to leave VaynerMedia, wanted to get into that world. That was a, a really fun execution, and we, we learned the pros and cons of going that route. And now we're kind of going the other way. I mean, Greg is keeping it wildly humble, but we have incredible ambition for our Vayner baseball practice. One, We think baseball players are grossly underrepresented off the field in speaking, in books, in products and services, merchandise, uh, and definitely social media endorsement and and definitely investing. AJ uh, helped one of our Vayner sports football players, Derek Morgan, the great star from the Tennessee Titans, make a very smart transition from instead of taking a brand deal, converting that into equity and the company went public, bringing that kind of savviness to these baseball players who don't have the level of access that I think NBA players and other celebrities have to get into angel rounds. You know, I obviously had a great, incredible investing career, but so did AJ as we were navigating that, and he got into a lot of things early and smartly, and so that's number one. Number two, you know, all of them, all baseball players are way less famous than they should be. You know, when I think about the general population of baseball, of America, excuse me, the demographics, this country has an incredible influx of uh, Latin, Spanish-speaking Americans. And when you think about the best, you know, South American, Central America, uh, Mexico, uh, DR, Latin, Spanish uh, Americans playing sports, it's all baseball. And when you, when you look at Vlad and, and Tatis and Soto and, and Baez, the stars, the Lindor, the stars of baseball are Spanish-speaking baseball players in a country that is emerging Spanish-speaking at such a level, and yet there's so, so much left on the table. And I believe, much like we looked at football, I would argue baseball, even more than football, is falling short on off-the-field opportunities for generational wealth creation outside of the remarkably large contracts that baseball players get to enjoy. I, I think, you know, I would just... To me, that excites me to no end, and uh, and I think that's you know 
what's really cool, Greg, is that we basically are now, with this announcement, in play for every baseball player on earth because what you've been able to do in your incredible career enables every single baseball player to feel confident that they can get the contract done that they need to get done with you at the helm. And then, you know, the rea- I mean, I've watched everything from A-Rod to Jeter to every single, you know, to Harper to Trout. You know, there is no better entity for off the field marketing and business execution as of this second than Vayner Baseball in baseball. And that includes the top two or three firms that have been around in this sport in perpetuity. And so that, that excites me. I think we're gonna make substantial noise. And football was a marathon for AJ and I. You know, we knew it was a kind of a 10 year play. But I do think baseball is going to happen mm-hmm. a little bit quicker with this combo. I think you're absolutely right, Gary. It's going to happen very quickly. Uh, the baseball, the professional baseball market's been very underserved when it comes to the type of offering that Vayner brings, when it comes to educating them on becoming business persons, becoming entrepreneurs, to think that way, uh, to market themselves, to create a brand. And that's what it has attracted me to come join Vayner Sports more than anything, is to really be honest and be true about being able to affect great change and great things for each individual athlete that we represent. And knowing that we have that core capability in-house is unbelievable because you know, after doing this for 20 years, my only ambition is to do the absolute best job, to provide the absolute best services. And what I love about you guys is you're right on the same page with me. I'm really good at my job and I do a really good job, but a fundamental aspect of it is educating each client that I'm working with. So that mm-hmm. they develop as men or women in some cases and get to a point of running their own business. They know how to do it. And yeah. what we offer as opposed to other agencies that maybe do a great job for some superstar clients is we are going to bring that capability to every client that we represent. Yeah, I think another aspect too, you know, in addition to the three people talking through it right now, Mike Nelligan, our EVP of marketing and sales, the one who actually connected the three of us. Um, I think you layer on the innovation, the multifaceted approach that Gary and I have, the disruption. Greg, you and your team's track record of doing great work on the business side. And then Mike having an extensive history, 15 years or so, of the traditional and untraditional endorsement sales marketing solutions. I think you just take those three things, you, you just create this cocktail that's perfect. Absolutely right. I've been I've been a big fan of Mike Nelligan's work for a long time. We've talked for a long time about how we can work together, uh, and now bringing us all together. Here we are. Here we are. All right. I'm going to get back to my show. Big announcement. I'm really excited about it, boys. Ready to get to work. Um, all right. Looking at so look, look, look looking to convert some of my uh, fantasy players on my team to actual Vayner Sports. Uh, uh, play, and so, uh, and and now I'm gonna buy a lot more baseball rookie cards. So I'm excited about that part <laughs> as well. Greg, welcome to the family. AJ, um, I'm really excited about this next chapter for us. Love you, bro. Love you. Man. Thanks, guys. Bye, everyone. Take See care. Bye, bye. Bye. Bye, bye. Vayner baseball in the building. VaynerSports.com. If uh, if you've got a, a, a nephew that's crushing baseball, um, and uh, and we're really excited about it. All right. Um, I think uh, I think we can move on with the show. Yo, what's up, Jack? <laughs> what up, Gary? How are hey, you? Man, I knew you're I knew you're a Jets fan, so I had to pull out my uh, Dan Marino. Dan the manager, <laughs> man. Bro, you're too young. Did you you didn't even get to see him play? Did you? Nah, I didn't get to see him play, but I heard all about him. So he was a beast. I hate him, yeah. but he was a beast. Right, gotcha. I'm in uh, Eugene, Oregon. I think you asked that. What's that, brother? I'm in Eugene, Oregon. I love that. I I love that. Yep, I did. What's cooking? Uh, By the way, I just wanted to talk first about this. Uh, I know you talk a lot about the Craigslist stuff. And uh, I've been on that forever, man. Like, seriously, every morning I go to that Craigslist research. Probably made, like, seven grand selling, like, ellipticals, treadmills, bench presses, like, just the yeah. stuff that people put for free, it's insane. I, you know, I, when I started talking about that two, three years ago, uh, and I was, it was something I told friends to do for the last 20 years, like, when you have nothing, when you have little, and you're willing to work, and you have hard work ethic in you, the ability to, like, 
if you're lucky enough to have a truck to pick up heavy things yeah. that people want for free, it's yeah, I see it, bro. That's game over. I mean, that's incredible. You know, that's incredible. Good for you. What can yeah, I answer I for you? Guarantee, man. I've seen like a, I got like the shaker machine for free. I sold it for like six hundred bucks last week. It's like, it's insane the kind of stuff you'll see on Craigslist. I love <laughs> it. What can I answer for you, bro? Yeah, so I've been going to college right now. I'm going to U of O studying business because I'm always I've always kind of been interested in business, but. I just feel like like the whole education system like it's just kind of bad like you know we learn about billboard advertising and we learn about all, all sorts of things that are super outdated and it's just like something that just doesn't make sense to me plus like you know they're taking school online now and tuition's not going to go down a dime and so it just doesn't really make sense to me like to stay in school and I've always like you know had aspirations to like start a business or do something like that but it's hard to get like other people on board and seeing your vision because, you know, I tell my family like, you know, I don't want to really go to go to college right now. And they're all kind of like, oh, you know, you're lazy. Like you're too young. Like you're not going to be able to do it. Like, you know, what do you, what do you say to the people that kind of just like, I don't say anything. The best for you, I don't, but, I don't say like, anything. I, I, let me rephrase. I say, I love you and I know that you want the best for me, but I've got to live my life and I'm going to show you. Yeah. Just get to work. Just get to work. Like I don't, I, don't, I don't have any interest in convincing people what I'm up to. People think, my whole life people thought I was doing things wrong. My whole life. Yeah. There was people who, we just announced Vayner Baseball and people were like, ah, that's not gonna work. You know, like my whole life that's what people, like, I don't care about talking to people, I care about showing people. You know, a bunch of my friends, yeah. literally when I launched Empathy it's Wines, when I, when I launched Empathy Wines, all, a lot of my friends were like, you're stretching yourself too thin, you go, you, you've got too much going on. You can't juggle all this, and then boom, 18 months later, you know, selling a company for hefty eight figures. Like, I'm not, I'm not worried about what people are saying. I'm worried about what I'm doing. Yeah, no, it's true. It's just, it's hard at times because people like, you know, it's, I feel like it's, the whole it's, thing about it's, going it's, it's not hard. It's, let me explain. Of course it's hard, but then you just, it's yeah. like turning a light switch. You gotta understand your parents, your uncle, your older brother, your sister, your aunt, your teacher, your coach. You gotta understand they're giving you advice that they think is right. They're not mean, they're not bad. They love you, they're trying to show you love. The problem is they're coming from their perspective and their perspective has nothing to do with your life. Mm -hmm. And that's the hard part, it's like people like, I feel like everybody just wants the safe option and like people want us to like know your like 10 year plan and they're always asking me like, oh, what's your 10 year plan? And I'm like, Fuck oh, a 10 year plan. Everyone's 10 year plan. Everyone's 10 year plan got completely fucked in March. It was called Corona. Yeah, facts. Fuck <laughs> 10 year plans. There's no, that's stupid. That's, and I hate yeah. that word. But like, that, there's, that's silly. 10 years? That's crazy to me. Bro, live your life. <laughs> Stick it to them. Yeah, yeah not fast. Dustin, his choppy now. Let's move on. But Jack, thank you so much, bro. Jack's got it. Jack, you got to figure it out, bro. Just live your life. Listen, here's the punchline. Somebody's going to be right. If you think you're so great and you can go do it without college, go do it. And if you fail, maybe they were right. But maybe also you would have went to college and just got into debt and wasted your time too. And you would have had two losses. And now you got to go on your third one and your third idea. And guess what? Doing the business that failed for five years taught you a lot more than sitting in a classroom learning about things that happened 10 years ago. Let's move it. Tommen. Tommen, you're on mute. There we go. What's up? What's good, Tommen? Yeah. Um, so like how how old are you and where are you from? I'm 14, I'm from Houston. Love it. What's good? So like two months ago, I started a d- digital media agency, a digital media marketing agency. I was just wondering, what are your strategies to get like your first client? Because I send like 200 emails, not a single reply. Uh, in the title, put "I will do social media for you for free." Okay. Okay. Also, one more question. Did uh, well, Tana? Let's sit on this for a second. I know you're a smart kid, but like, you you do understand that when you're at 14 years old, and and you've got something new and you get zero replies of 200 requests, the number one move is to get credibility. So doing that work for free for two or three people for a month lets the next email in six months say, hi blank, I did, I did or I do the social media for X, Y, and Z. I'd love to talk to you about your social media. 
boom, you've got a totally different conversation. All right. Um, I have one more question. Please. What's your, what are your thoughts on drop shipping? I'm a fan. Okay. I think, I think over time, you know, what I love about drop shipping is you can learn the arbitrage of supply and demand and making margin on something that you can buy that somebody else wants to pay more for. Use the infrastructure of Amazon to do that for you. It's a very tech, it's a very hardcore game. It's not as easy as it sounds. Uh, but it's an incredible learning process. It's the same reason I like sports cards. It's the same reason I like garage sailing. Same reason I like Jack going, finding things on Craigslist for free and then selling them. Anything that teaches you how to buy something and then resell it for more is always going to be a skill that will stick with you forever. All right, thank you. Also, one last question. Can I get a follow? You can, brother. Yes. Where's your account? Let's see here. You can. Tommy, did you did you really grasp the free thing? Because you went quick yeah. on it. I just, you know, I want to make sure you realize how big of a deal that is. All right. It's um. All right, brother. I am your four hundred thirty first follower. Thank you. So you're taking some pretty photos. What do you like? You like the sky? No, I just went on vacation to Canada like a year ago. Good man. You need more content, bro. All right, get, thank get you. your game up. All right, you're welcome. See ya. See ya. Let's keep going. Keep this going. There we go. Hi. Hi. I'm so excited to be here. I'm happy to have you. Um, first of all, congratulations. Uh, sorry, my dog is flipping out here. I gotta. I love the dog. Made him with treats. <laughs> no worries. Anyway, congratulations on Vayner Sports and all the awesome things you're doing. Thank you, Thank you for providing this forum because it's awesome. And um, I'm so blown away to be in the presence of so many young, awesome people that. Um, if you are a young person, man, this is the time. I, I can't stress that enough where everything is in your favor to do whatever you could possibly want. And, good news. Uh, good, good news. If you're yeah. 67, this is the time. It's called the internet. Internet is at its maturity. The cost yeah. of entry is extremely low. And if you're educated and willing to put in the work, an extraordinary amount of opportunity sits in one's hand, whether you're 14, 41, or, or 91. Well, that's really encouraging. I, I feel like a baby. In my mind, I'm still 27, although I've got my 54th coming up here in a couple of weeks. Well, happy birthday. Um, you look amazing. <laughs> Thanks. Lighting. 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 Everything. Something that uh, I've never figured out. Everyone's like, you look horrible. I'm like, I don't give a fuck just about light lighting. Light it up. Light it up. Go ahead. <laughs> and makeup. And makeup. So um, so here's the deal. I have been, a, you know, a child and family therapist for over 30 years. Um, more than your folks today have been breathing, probably. But um, I love doing that. I, um, I focused on child welfare, early childhood uh, issues, social emotional issues, autism, ADHD, like the whole gamut, uh, mostly with, with young, you know, young kids and parents. And, um, and so I ended up writing a parenting book. This is back in 2000, 1999, 2000. Um, the internet, so that's why I'm so excited about today because things are are there. Back when I was doing this, I sold out of three printings of my book. I self-published all on my own, just from doing talks and selling back of the room. And I was doing all kinds of radio, uh, but there was no way to deliver the book. I mean, people uh, would call, you know, I was trying to get the website thing going. Uh, it was $10,000 back then to get a order form. So I, I felt like I'm always in the wrong time frame, and now finally the time is there. Um, so I was doing really well. I ended up uh, doing nothing but my public speaking, um, signature talks, seminars, and I burnt out on the, the, um, uh, the therapy. So I got into, of course, real estate, which I love, uh, just investing and also selling for other folks. And I, everything was like going top speed. And then I got into a five car uh, pileup car accident, so uh, which led to finding out about an ovarian tumor that I had. And then just to really top it off, I got into a really crappy uh, marriage. So all those three things, I, it but, reminds but Maria, me. Maria, 
it, yeah. it sounds like, if I heard it right, that the car accident it, it was a blessing because you were able to get diagnosed earlier. Oh, or something absolutely. That was yeah, they, I had zero symptoms and even the ultrasound didn't find it. It was only because of the MRI I needed to have from the accident for my back. Otherwise, even if I had symptoms, I'd be dead right now. They, they would not have uh, detected yeah. it. So very grateful for that. Um, and anyway, so the turnaround, I think it, it's kind of like for me, uh, what happened was, um, you know, what's that saying? Like everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face. Right? <laughs> and boy, that felt like a punch in the face. And it took me a long time. I started like really questioning, like, well, what am I doing? Maybe I don't know what I'm doing, you know, all of this stuff. So I started getting coaching and that led me down this like rabbit hole of different people telling me what I should do. Don't do the parenting thing. There's no money in that. There, do this, go corporate, be this. And I felt like I really lost my identity and all of that. Uh, so my one issue is just overload of opinions and input from all over the place. Um, do this funnel, uh, no, change the name of your stuff. It's too negative. It's all, it's yeah. all, it's all that whole world of mark, internet marketers, funnels, conversion, transactional. Yeah. It's very short term. It's, it's money over everything. Yeah. It's, I understand. It's, it's a world that I think has a lot of shortcomings. Yeah. So it feels really inauthentic to me. And uh, so I'm like, all right, I don't want to be that cheesy, you know, oh, I'm buying my program or, you know, whatever. Uh, but I do have a wealth of knowledge. I am, you know, the real deal. I can honestly tell you when it comes to kids stuff, nobody. Uh, so so, can so do it are, we, are we talking about how do we think about a business model? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, that has been it is like really focusing the messaging or, or should what, I not? What are, you, what are you trying to sell? I'm not trying to sell anything right now. Um, but but what, I have, what, what will you try to sell? Because I think the strategy has to be based like, do, for example, do you want right. to do you do, do you want to do one on one therapy and consulting or strategy sessions? And uh, for example, if one wants to do that, you know, I mean, I, every day of my life, I get an email or a DM where people are offering me levels of money for just an hour of my time that blow my you. mind. That's right. because I took the route of giving unlimited good content for free for a decade for free, which became the way that I could have people wanting to pay me $25,000 for an hour consulting. I don't want to do that. I don't do that. So that's that. Uh, other people want to do 100 people in a group and charge them $100 a month. Other people don't want to charge anything. They just want to do speaking and selling books because they have, like, there's a million different ways to yeah. do something. The question becomes, which one do you want? What do you feel most authentic about is the real question. For me, it's the speaking and, um, and even taking it online, doing online seminars, doing things live. Uh, then, 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 you, then, then, then you need to put out unlimited content for free across the 10 platforms that matter, Facebook, Instagram, you know, LinkedIn, Twitch, TikTok, podcast, YouTube, you know, on and on and on. And you need to do it at the highest level every day so that you build up demand so stuff comes to you. Okay, gotcha. Who, Maria, whoever is asking has given up the leverage. Okay. Let me explain that. Yeah. If you're putting out incredible content every day, every day, then people are going to come to you. Gotcha. If you're out there trying to figure out how to like not bring a whole, like try, in, if you're out there trying to figure out how do you get to a place where you are getting paid to speak, then, then a lot of times you end up being the person asking. Hey, can I speak at your conference? Hey, you know, how do I get in there? You're asking me, hey, can you introduce me to the people that you're speaking? You're asking. Right. My strategy has been, if I put out the best information in the world for free in perpetuity, things will come to me. And, uh, yeah. and that's how it's worked. I get it. I just, um, because of my confusion, I stopped posting, you know, I have Good news, Maria. You're unconfused yeah. now. Good news, we're unconfused. Yes. Yes. I'm confused. Absolutely. I, you know, for, if you listen to somebody who said, 
you know, no, you can't put it out for free, then nobody's gonna pay you for it. Good news, unconfused. I do not agree with that. Yeah, it, love you know, it. I, by the way, I could, be, I could be wrong, but I can tell you right now, if you're the real deal, then you need to be putting it out for free and let it come to you. The more the real deal you are, the more yeah. that needs to be the strategy. Okay. Yeah, I did uh, I did a thing of lives like uh, the 12 days of cray cray before all this COVID stuff, uh, counting down to Christmas. And I got like a really awesome response to that. And then I was told, well, you're going in a different direction, right? So I think it needs to be Ooh. all noises yeah. off. Uh, yeah, and just Turn those, do my thing. yeah. I don't. I don't like. I don't. Everything I've heard from you, whoever this business coach is that you're paying, that's giving you dog shit advice. Yeah, we, need done. To, we need to be done with that. Okay, just do the do. Just do the do. Boo. Okay. Boo. <laughs> listen to me. Listen to me. Yes. Karma. Doing the right thing, like mm -hmm. truly, truly wanting to help is always the best business strategy. I love that. And that, that's where I was, that's where I had started, and then it got all convoluted, like I say afterwards. Because I started doubting I get doubting it, I get myself. it. I get it. You, you got into a mucky spot, you mm -hmm. started doubting, all of a sudden short-term wins were needed, maybe money was needed. It all makes sense to me. I respect sure. the shit out of how you got there. Uh, good news, we're still young as fuck. Don't let that fucking 14 year old throw you off. You know what I mean? I love that 14 year old. I love Tom and 2. I love that. I love Tom and 2, but don't let that age throw you off. You still have literally, minimally, 30 years of real execution in front of you. Maybe yeah. at 84, I'm okay with you going and chilling. And so, <laughs> 30 years, 30 years, okay. you have a long fucking future in front of you. Start doing what comes natural to you. The other stuff didn't come natural to you, which is why it didn't work. Exactly. And awesome. I thought, yeah, it's not working. But yeah, I'm hooking up with Tommen, uh, and I will pay you. <laughs> All right, Tommen, so, there you go. Yeah. All right, talk to you. Awesome. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Make sure you clarify hooking up with Tommen. That's a that's a different kind of term in t today's days. <laughs> I'm kidding. Like that, that's it. I got you uh, with that I, one. I thought the same thing. <laughs> uh, we're just idiots. All right, let's keep it going. <gasps> John Z, what's good? What's up, Gary? How are you? I'm well, and you? I'm doing so well. Um, so basically, I'm gonna get straight to the point. Um, for a lot of years, I wasn't that great at school. In middle school, I was in a decelerated learning program. And in high school and college, I kind of stuck it to my parents and I worked really, really hard. I buckled down. I've gone straight A's all throughout. I've taken so many classes that I'm 19 right now. I'm actually going to graduate in the spring just because I've taken on such a workload. Um, and throughout that process. Why'd you do that? Go ahead. Throughout that process. Well, throughout that process, I was really set on being a doctor and I was really excited about it. And it was because I kind of had an interest in psychology. And I was talking to my parents when they're like, oh, well, you should be a doctor and be a psychiatrist because that'll make more money. And so like once that seed was planted, it kind of grew into a force. I was like, oh, we'll go to med school. Um, and after freshman year, I was like, I don't want to do that anymore. Um, and good. I have stuck with my psych major, um, but I've been less and less sure about it as I've gone through college and with all of Corona happening and classes being online, I was thinking about taking a semester off, starting a business and maybe even trying to drop out. But what my college did is they shortened the um, requirement for how many semesters you had to stay. A lot of colleges, you actually need to stay eight semesters. Like you're not allowed to graduate early. But my college let us. So I'm just gonna finish my degree. And I started a business this summer um, and I'm kind of having a hard time getting away from, oh, I got A's this quarter or A's this semester. Like, that's great. I did a good job. I can see it to something more intangible. Like, how should I judge myself and where should I set that? I bar? love this question. I think, yeah. you should, I think you should judge yourself based on how happy you are on a daily basis. Okay. Um, stick with me here. Yeah. The number one thing I don't like about school is the short-term gratification of a tangible, subjective, often, result 
that reinforces stay in the lane behavior. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, your subconscious and your fucking soul has been quietly chipping away at your conscious over the last, sounds like 12 to 18 months, helping you realize, I don't like this. Yeah. You're very fortunate. You're at an extremely young age for that to become something that you're aware of. Then you follow it up with such a thoughtful fucking question. I'm proud of you, bro. That was such a great question. Thank you. Um, Unfortunately, people go from grades, A, B, C, D, F, to, you know, diploma, to salary starting point, to promotion and title, and like everybody just stays in this fucking game. And to your point, everybody judges themselves tangibly. How many followers do I have? How many, what grades that, you know, how many, how much money do I make? What car do I have versus the, like, and it all fucking sucks. Meanwhile, if you judged yourself of like, is today good? Is this week good? Is this month good? Because today could be bad. Where people get caught on the way I think about the world is they decide one day. I, sometimes I go three weeks and it's not phenomenal. But in the net of a year, of a half a decade, it is phenomenal. So people overjudge the micro, underjudge the macro, but need to judge it in the framework of happiness and fulfillment, not outside affirmation. Gotcha. I don't do tea with Gary V for the followers or the views or the things of that nature. I do it because it feels nice to help people. I'm pumped what Tom and, and Maria are feeling right now. Yeah. It's the yeah. easiest thing to judge in the world, brother. Judge how you fucking feel. Okay. Um, and I, I feel like I already know the answer to this question, but when you say that and when you're thinking about what you want to do, how you want to spend your time, how much of a percentage does money take up? Because when I leave college, there's a part of me that really wants to be independent. Like It ebbs and, flow, it ebbs and flows. You yeah. know, I think, you know, in, Money's never been a big one for me, mainly because I had the ability to live humbly. Gotcha. Um, I mean, dude, I'm not a fan of money. I don't know what else to say. Like, I'm good at making it, which I don't, I don't, uh, I don't underestimate the, the gift that is money making, but I'm not into it as much as people may think. You know, they hear things like, I wanna buy the Jets, and they associate that with money. I, um, it's just, my relationship with money is very strange. I love the fact that there, you know, I like the ability to do, I like the ability to recognize that my talent mixed with hard work created some variable of that execution, but like, I don't know, man, like I'm even mustering, I'm even struggling to get hyped on money right now to balance out this convo because I'm being empathetic and compassionate and sympathetic to individuals who aren't good at making it, need it, are struggling, so I don't wanna be glib, but um, it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you spend. Like if you get out of college and you live with your four most ambitious to be happy friends in a shitty fucking neighborhood in a garbage apartment, um, you know, very quickly, you don't just don't need that much. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, I mean, I mean, you know, so for me, you know, for everybody it's different. But for me, I take for granted my ability to make it, thus I don't respect it as much as other people. Um, I work hard, I'm proud of it, but like, I wanna be happy more than like, but like, but it's a funny thing, right? Cause it's a scoring mechanism. Like, so for example, like when I'm like on eBay last night for like five hours trying to figure out which sports cards are underpriced to buy, Mm -hmm. it is under the context of like, I'm gonna buy this Kareem Abdul-Jabbar rookie card for 2,000, it's gonna be worth 4,000 in a year. It's not about the $2,000 profit, it's about the smarts of seeing it. Yeah. I yeah. like that's what makes it fun for me. Okay. Okay. I get that. So it's like it's less about the actual money that you're making, 
but the way in which like you're using different tactics and strategies and and it's like like you say a lot of time like it is a game and it's a game yeah. You know, I, I love being an entrepreneur. I don't want to diss on money or entrepreneurship or capitalism. It's it's just the money part's not the part that gets me going. I don't like looking at my money or having it yeah. <laughs> or saying how much I have. Or I don't give a shit about that. I like the game of collect of getting it through something smart or something noble or something hardworking or betting on something for ten years and then you know it's business. I like business. Yeah. I like a business. The I like the business of it. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, Gary, that's all I had. Thank you so much for having John, me. John, you're a super, super thoughtful kid. Listen to me. Judge yourself on how good it feels. Okay. You're going you're gonna to have a very difficult time in one transition. You were not this good student, and the system, your parents, the school system, they told you you couldn't. Yeah. You took that. You put that chip on your shoulder and you fuck it, stuck it to them. Even the way that you delivered the sentence of showing your parents, you took the energy of you can't and you said, fuck you, I'll show you. And mm-hmm. that was your driver. Yeah, yeah. I like that because I have a very, I'm a very chippy fucker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> However, what I had layered on that was I was chippy, but I was willing to play a game where there was no obviousness to me winning and then it was a surprise at the end. You went through a game where it was act, you know, it was affirmation every yeah. 90 days. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to story tell this to you so that you get out of that because if you can convert it to the energy of don't worry about what everybody's saying along the way, you're just gonna be like, ta-da, look at me at 30, I'm happy and I'm fruitful. Ta-da, look at me at 40, I'm happy and I'm fruitful. Ta-da, I'm, you know? So, yeah. so try to figure out how you can still play that game that clearly works for you but don't need, and in fact, how do you get comfortable with it being the other way? I actually seek out subconsciously people to not believe in me. Hmm. I don't want the affirmation. I want to be the underdog. I want to be, one of the, wor- one of the things that's going on with me is this whole Gary Vee thing is a problem for me because now, you know, Rezzy sold for a lot of money, K-Swiss sold for a lot of money. Empathy sold for a lot of money. Like people are starting to realize I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm a fucking business fucking juggernaut. (laughs) And the more they believe that, the more everything I do now gets received with that's gonna work instead of what I want, which is this is not gonna work. Yeah, yeah. I think that it's difficult just because, you know, it's not good for me to have that tangible like A, A, A. But it's also like I can show it to my parents and I can stick it to them that way. It's hard to stick it to your parents. Not that that's the goal, but when I'm just like, oh, hey, I'm happy, you know? And I, that, I, that, That's where you're not seeing it. Yeah. Let me promise you, the number one sticking it to people move in the world is saying you're happy because 99% aren't. Yeah, gotcha. They may not react the same way as an A, but I promise you, when you go back to your car and you drive back to your friends and you had a nice Sunday afternoon with them, when your mom or dad's in the shower thinking, they're like, F- first they're gonna be happy because they love you, but if there's yeah. really some friction there uh, or like some little chippiness, I promise you right now, the number one way to win this whole fucking thing, bro, I know unlimited miserable as fuck millionaires. Unlimited. I know more miserable as fuck millionaires than I know fucking happy millionaires. Damn. And bro, damn is right because if, you actually, <laughs> if people actually understood what unhappiness was, it doesn't matter. It, you know, when you're doing fucking unlimited fucking prescription drugs in your fucking mansion, you're not a happy fucking person. When you're fucking drinking a bottle of fucking alcohol every night to two o'clock in the morning in your fucking Maserati, you're not a fucking happy person. People need to wake the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. You're not winning. 100%. 100%. Yep. Bro. You can show the, promise you, happiness is exactly how you chip it. I'm excited to. Good. I'm excited for you. I really believe in you, bro. I intuitively really believe in you. That's why I'm keeping you on here. I think you can really do this, but I want you to challenge yourself to get more comfortable with long-term gray versus short-term black and white. Yeah, I think that's really, really hard because I've been trying to put out content for my small business, like also sending a bunch of emails out every night. It's hard to balance my time between like building up a lot of content 
and putting out good information, writing a little blog and posting on Instagram, doing all these things that it's really hard to see the return on investment, you know? All, and, thing, all things that are great are hard. Yeah. 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 It's just tough because like- I, everything, everything great is tough. Yeah. That, everybody wants a 1% life and nobody wants to put in the 1% work ethic and mental strength and patience required to get there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I watch the world and I'm, everyone's like, I want. I'm like, that's nice. Everybody wants. 7.7 .7 billion people want. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's just so difficult because, again, in school, and like, again, I don't want to be like a victim here and be like, oh, school ruined me or whatever it is, but. It really is the truth that the bro, you took bro, you, school didn't ruin you. You ruined yourself if you believe that because you chose that was the outlet to stick it to people. Yeah. I chose a different outlet. Yeah. I didn't double down on school and applied myself. I said, "Oh, you think I'm shit? Watch this. I'm gonna completely check out, get F's my whole life, hone my skill on something I love, and then be a fucking savant in your fucking mouth." And now they fucking want to put statues in my fucking high school of me—a kid that they wanted to kick the fuck out of there. I mean, how did you even deal with something like that? Like having so many people. I enjoy. I enjoy when people think I. I love my haters on social media. Yeah, I mean, you do talk about that all the time. About it's the truth. I mean, I don't know if people think I'm out here for show. I fucking love it. Let me get this straight. You took the time to watch my video. I don't even know who you are. Mm -hmm. I don't know who you are. I have no time to figure that out. I'm here to like bring love, not hate. You decided to obsess over what I'm doing, and then you decided to leave negativity and you're trying to bring me into negative negativity loves company misery loves company like you i i love it because it adds a chip to my shoulder i'm like i'm gonna fucking stick it to your face comma yeah. man i feel so much sympathy and compassion for you i feel so bad that you live a life that behind a keyboard and an anonymous name often with a private account you've decided to spit hate my god you must be in a very bad place i love you I'm so sorry that you're living this life. Yeah. And I'm sorry that my light of positivity and optimism and happiness is something that you're so subconsciously jealous of that you need to try to drag it down to even make it palpable. Yeah, it's all about balancing that grizzly bear with that cuddly teddy bear inside of you. Yeah, you know? I like that. I like that. That, that. I like that analogy. I, I, I have that. I'm a fucking assassin. I will kill everyone, comma, <laughs> I love everybody. And I have that, I have that. I have nothing but love, unlimited, always give trust first, nothing has to be earned with me. Who the fuck am I? I love you, I love you, I love you. You wanna go into a dark place with me? I'm ready to fucking throw down. Fuck you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I've totally found that I promoted one of my TikTok videos that I post on Instagram. I promoted it because I felt like people really liked those videos. Um, and the only comments I got were people like, oh, like no one can understand what you're saying. We're like, like this doesn't make sense. Like your Facebook, like this information, like it's not good and here's why, blah, 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 blah. And like, those are the only comments on it. Dude, that sounds like a successful day for me. <laughs> there. I mean, I mean it, bro. People see me now. Everything I did in the wine world with, you should see my YouTube videos at first. The entire wine industry thought it was stupid and I lost my mind. Social media, it's a fad. You've got this big wine business. What are you fucking around with Twitter for? Damn. Bro, bro, do you know how much, how many whispers behind my back two years ago all my friends were making about this obsession with sports cards and it's so stupid and it's a waste of my time? That market has outperformed the stock market and the real estate market substantially. Yeah. I like the booze. I live for the fucking booze. I, I'm, I, I am devastated for my haters. If they actually knew, if they actually knew that their hate was my fuel, they'd be, if they knew the chemicals going <laughs> through my body, they'd be devastated. Absolutely. Uh, devastated. They'd be devastated by knowing how much love I have for them, compassion, deep sympathy, empathy, deep, mm -hmm. slash complete need for their hisses and boos because it fuels me to fucking stick it 
to them at scale. They would yeah. be crushed, crushed, John. I love it. I love you. Talk to you, bro. See you later, Gary. See you. Um, let's wrap this up. Today is the one-year anniversary of Wine Text. By the way, that was fire. Let's get that clipped up. Um, today we have our one-year anniversary wine. Uh, it is pretty uh, remarkable. It is one of the best wines we've ever offered. It's a 97 out of 100 point squirt of wine from Europe uh, that we are gonna sell for under $20 a bottle. Literally, literally, every single person that's watching right now that, um, um, <laughs> literally every single person that's watching right now that buys wine in any shape or form should absolutely sign up and pick up 12 of today's. Please share wine text to every single person you know with wine. Today is, is the day. Yep, under $20 a bottle. Um, yep, under 20. Today's gonna be wild. That was a hard transition, Justin, from that emotional monster to like, hey, we interrupt this program for a wine text commercial. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Dustin, you need to buy a bottle today. All righty. Yep, get reactivated because I'm sure you're unsubscribed because you're a jerk. No, you're not a jerk <laughs> because do not sign up for wine text if you don't buy wine because it costs money to send a text. But uh, good show. That was a good one at the end there. There was some real deep shit there. Yeah. Uh, we are not back tomorrow because now I have an issue. So we'll figure it out. We'll let everybody know on social when we're back. Hope you enjoyed today's show. Uh, Can you yeah. also do the uh, thing that Sid asked for at the end? You know, how we used to do it with Ask Gary V. You know, we intro the podcast or whatever. What's that? Remember how you would at the end of like kind of give like a wrap up on Ask Gary V of like what the episode was Oh, like. on this episode? Yeah. Got it. Is this for the podcast? I think, and I'm gonna find out about that. I didn't. I saw your uh, tweet. You know the the problems with the audio levels and all. Oh that. yeah, yeah. I don't know if you saw oh, that. I'm yeah, okay. Um, on this episode of Tea with Gary V, we talked to a 14 year old starting a business, a 54 year old who's gonna switch it back up, and we get really deep into the relationship with haters and how to measure the gray instead of the short-term black and white. Good? Perfect. Awesome. All right, everybody have a great day. Hit me up on Twitter. Uh, my text, I'm telling you, big one today.